Welcome to my Limeworks. My name is Thomas Savin and I'd like to invite you to take a walk with me around my historic Limeworks at Wanamunak. I was an Oswestry man from birth and although I never lived in Wanamunak, I've always had strong connections with the village. And I think it's fair to say that I influenced its development hugely. In 1857, I went into business with my friend and colleague David Davis from Llandenham. I built my railways for both the carriage of goods, particularly for the limestone from my quarry here in Llanaminach, as well as for passenger traffic, because, you see, I had a vision of opening up the whole of Wales and the Cambrian area for transporting people to and from the coast from all points east. Some people have called me an entrepreneur, don't you know? <laughs> you see, I was fortunate enough to be able to lease two quarries, one on the Welsh side of the border and one on the English, from the Earl of Powys and the Earl of Bradford, respectively. And I saw a great future in this business for all sorts of industrial purposes. And so we proceeded to operate on an expanding scale and I set my sights on building a Hoffman kiln, which would increase our production facility by a substantial percentage. We're standing at the base of the English incline, which rises 154 feet up to the English quarry. In front of us are the two tunnels which were built to carry the Turnpike Road over the tramways, constructed in 1858. As we look at the tunnels, the one on the right carries the English incline, the one on the left carried the Welsh incline. Two tracks would have come down the incline, one would have been carrying full trucks, the other one would have been taking the empty trucks back up to the quarry. They were hooked onto a continuous wire hawser which travelled all the way up the incline to a brake drum at the top which was then controlled by a brake man who steadied the loaded truck so they didn't run away too fast. This was the tally house. As the trucks were brought down from the hill, full of rock, with a team of men and boys and labourers, the tally man would have operated the weigh bridge and the rock would be weighed. Because, of course, these people were paid on a piecework. From here, the ta tally man would direct them as to where the rock had to go. It might go straight down the track to the canal, and be transported as rock. It might have been sent to the kilns where it was going to be um, burnt to make quicklime or it could have been sent to the railway. The tally man had the cushy job. If you look in you can see there's two rooms in there, each with a fireplace. He was able to take it easy in between trucks coming down and he was one of the bosses really because he was telling people what to do. The interesting thing is in the bottom left hand corner which is one of the tally man's records that was actually found in the roof of this building before it fell down and if you look closely you can try and interpret what he's been doing, the tally marks he has made to show how much rock, where it was going and what it was doing. The Hoffman kiln created the means of a continuous production of limestone by the alternate packing of the stone and coal and starting the burning at one and working around the whole kiln in an oval shape so that by the time we'd finished firing at one end we were ready to start the next. This is how the limestone um, 
as it was brought down from the quarry, was stacked within the kiln, um, basically built up as a dry stone wall, similar to what you would see as a field boundary. The walls were built up between the feeder holes in the in the roof of the kiln, obviously, which was allow, which would allow the coal to fall between the walls to uh, to, f to fuel the burning process. The small archway is part of the flue system, which r runs underneath the kiln uh, into a central flue, which then connects to the chimney. This was used to control the flow of air through the kiln, control the burning speed and the temperature within the kiln. Next to the flue, just to the right, is the large arch or the wicket, which is bricked up as it would have been when the kiln was burning. The Hoffman kiln um, wanted to really make the most of the, the energy stored in the coal that was poured in there and of course by using less coal um, uh, with a more efficient process it meant that the cost of burnt lime came down or in other words the profits to the people who were making it went up. Oh yes indeed, I did rather well for myself. Yes this certainly was a busy place in my day. Did you know that I quadrupled lime production in the 1870s? And after being elected mayor of Oswestry in 1863, I, uh, I was worth something over one million pounds. Uh, oh, I, I understand that's somewhere in the region of 50 million pounds in today's values. Well, that just about ends our tour of the Rannemunnock Lime Works. I'm glad to see that I've left something of a legacy here and that all my hard work and enterprise is still remembered to this day. If ever you're travelling on the Cambrian Railways, spare me a thought. So, goodbye and farewell. And here's a little song to listen to on your way back to your carriage. <laughs> yes, I, I mean motor car. I started as a draper, the best in Oswestry. But draping was too fancy, so I changed grocery. Three cheers to Mr. Savin, he owns a draper's shop. Long life to Mr. Savin, he's heading for the top. I dealt in milk and sugar, in coffee and in tea. But that was much too easy, so I bought a colliery. Three cheers to Mr. Savin, he owns a draper's shop. The coal that came from Querigo was burnt in every grate, but mining was too dirty, so I thought I'd quarry slate. Three cheers for Mr. Savin, who won't do draper's shop. Long life to Mr. Savin, he's heading for the top. Three cheers for Mr. Savin, who won't do draper's shop. Long life to Mr. Savin, he's heading for the top. Then a hop merchant, a new life I began. But I soon tired of hopping and became a railway man. Cheers to Mr. Savin, his praises we will sing. Long life to Mr. Savin, now he's the railway king. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well done, boys and girls.